said it before, as you can tell. Oh, shit. Good morning. What's up? Hey guys doing? Welcome to the stream. Uh, we're going to be talking about this crazy story. I'm a little discombobulated. It feels like that every stream. The camera didn't work when I first started. There was all these little knickknacks. The Facebook live that I set up since last night didn't show up on stream labs. It was all this weird shit. Sorry. Let me not curse. It's too early. To, too early to curse. But we figured out. We're here, man. We're here and we're um okay so this is a pretty nutty story man good morning uh christine brandy uh hemi momo tanika ashley uh which momo recommended the story actually she told me about this and we talked about this for a while last night <laughs> ashley <laughs> i i can't even believe i did that video but just the insanity that was going on at that time <laughs> you know how many people emailed me contacted me like on other different live streams they'd start mocking that thing too oh man it's crazy that those kids aren't found though all this time you two told me the live was scheduled for 3 30 p.m really that's weird and uh if you guys wouldn't mind hitting like please 
because I put out a bunch of videos last night, which by the way, yeah, after the stream, check my channel if you miss some of the stories. I'm not sure what people are getting, what people aren't. Some people get the notification, some don't. Some get it three days later. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what's going on. Um, just pull it up here real quick. Okay, well, you might not want to watch the mask. If you're easily offended, you might not want to watch the, uh, the mask one. <laughs> but I, I thought it was an interesting topic, this mask one. And then, and then we have the murder of Kivante Love, which his mother reached out just to, you know, try to spread the story. This is from 2019. And I believe his aunt commented on it. And then we have Jacqueline Flores. So, um, and this was the, the most recent community post that was pretty controversial. Anyway, while we get started, um, so we're going to be talking about Thessalonica Allen, 34 year old wife, um, and Randy Allen, he was a husband. And I'm not exactly sure how many kids there was according to the GoFundMe, which I'll, I'll show you here so you can see the family. We're, we're going to be looking at a court document, by the way, and I'm going to place uh, two news clips. But this story is really just kind of insane. And it seems like, you know, we're going to have to wait and see to get all the information. But it seems like this was potentially a man that was in an abusive relationship. Um, my name is Jaquila. Uh, Jaquila. Sorry if I'm saying it wrong. No, disres no disrespect. I'm the oldest daughter of Randy Allen, who was brutally murdered at the hands of someone he thought was his wife on July 26, 2021. My family, uh, my family just learned of his death August 2nd, 2021. This is a horrible tragedy for our family. And I, I wonder why the time gap, and we're going to get into the documents because there was a period of where the body was just in a closet and the kids are being woken up to try to clean up the the mess it, it's insane it's a, it's something that you would think out of some sort of horror movie except it's not a movie it's reality it's just sickening uh as many of you know things like this are tragic and very sudden he left behind five children and seven grandchildren i'm gonna put the link to this i'll throw it real quick in the chat and when i have a chance i'll put it in the description if you guys want to send something to the family my dad was the sweetest person anyone could meet. He would walk in a dark room and make it shine bright with his big grin and his hilarious jokes. He did not deserve what happened to him at a very young age of 50. Please, if you find it in your heart to help, uh, to help with laying him to rest, I would be grateful. It is very much needed and appreciated. Um, and I think that there's a lot of guys out there that go through some sort of crazy situation and we just don't really hear about it or society in my opinion just doesn't seem to give it much attention as you know if it was a woman or take it serious or get laughed at or mocked or maybe it's not the manly thing you know um so i wanted to show you two news clips before we start into the document because we're going to see some of his family speak and i think it's good to see that okay, one second I think this was yeah this one let's check this out difficult to comprehend hello again everyone i'm brian welcome Conner. everybody thanks for stopping by please hit like oh and thank you janet for the stars appreciate that 100 stars thank you very much randy allen was shot dead and his body was cut to pieces in laporte last week the suspect facing charges is allen's own wife who told police the victim was allegedly beating her and her children ABC 57's Allison Zeihammer sat down with Allen's stunned family this afternoon. She's live in South Bend right now for us. Allison? Brian, Tiffany, it's a brutal incident that nobody saw coming. Randy's family telling me that they didn't even know about his horrific death until just yesterday. And now they're all just left trying to process the death of a loved one and also the cruel details police say happened to him. Now we do want to warn viewers that some of these details may be disturbing. He was a good man. He loved his grandchildren, all his children, his daughters his mom, his sisters, his brothers, 
we are, we're a close-knit family. Last week on July 29th, a horrifying phone call was made to 911 by a man that his ex-girlfriend, 34-year-old Tessa Lonica Allen, brutally murdered her husband, Randy Allen, inside of a Laporte apartment. This is hard. It's hard to imagine anybody who would do something like that to him. He was so sweet. According to the probable cause affidavit, Tessa Lonica called her ex, Roy Walker, telling him Randy was abusing one of her children. When Roy arrived to their home at Maple Tree Apartments on West 18th Street, she showed him Randy's body inside of the closet, claiming she shot him because he was beating on her and the kids. Tessa Lonica confessed this to detectives, saying she panicked after she shot him and cut off both his legs with an axe. The whole ordeal more than heartbreaking. Panicked. She shot him, panicked, cut off his legs. Which we're going to get into all the, this is just warming up. I pre-recorded reading three pages of documents. We're going to actually get into details. So, you know, if this is something you might not want to hear, if you're squeamish, it might get, it might get a little graphic. We're not going to see visuals, but you're going to, it's going to get descriptive. Also, if you have kids around, you might want to put headphones on or something like that. For Randy. So the three people that we're going to be kind of focusing on is Thessalonica, the 34 year old wife. Randy Allen, the 50 year old husband, and then there's the ex, uh, Rory Walker, which she called that night because they have a mutual child together that was living with um, the husband and the wife. And you see how this woman was using and manipulating not only her children, but also the ex to get done what she wanted to get done. So you got to be careful out there, too, men and other people, women, too, how people will try to use each other and they'll use kids to get the job done. Because I've said this so many times with other topics, which I'm not going to get into because we're going to focus on this. Thank you, Momo. Um, some of the most vile, sickest people and desperate people are the people that use kids to get their message across, manipulate and use children and indoctrinate children. Whatever they got to do, they go through the means of kids. All right. So that's what this woman was doing here. His family. I said, I'm not going to ever see my son no more. I kept saying that, and I'm not gonna ever see his face anymore. And all I could see was his smiling face. I'm not gonna see that beautiful smile anymore. And that funny laugh. Yeah. <laughs> and the noise he used to make. We're not gonna hear that and see that anymore. Court documents show her kids were present during the altercation and after the murder. In an interview with detectives, they say they were woken up by Tessalonica to help her drag Randy's body out of the room and into a vehicle but he was too heavy. Detectives performed a search warrant in the apartment where they found Randy's body in a tote bag in her daughter's room. Detectives also found several handwritten notes, which appear to be a checklist, including specific instructions on what to do with Randy and what to do afterwards. Nobody can. I don't know if they say the checklist here, but like I said, in the full document, we're going to get into the checklist. Not only did she kill this guy, not only did she use the kids to manipulate and whatever, not only did she try to use the ex to clean up the body, move the body, she also had a checklist of, of ways to kill um, Randy, of ways to set him up with guns and drugs and all this kind of stuff. This woman was plotting and like planning. Definitely premeditated, if you ask me, just my opinion. Understand the pain and the trauma that our family is going through right now knowing that the person that you love was taken away from you maybe come back later awful awful manner and he didn't deserve that randy's family members now left in complete shock after hearing about their loved one five days after he took his last breath i knew something was wrong because so five days after his death is when the family learns about it we always talk and i kept calling them and calling them and no answer. I said, what's going on? Texting. And when that police came in that door mm -hmm. and my landlord came in that house yesterday, I knew something was wrong with my son and I lost it. My brother lay dead for five days before we even knew where he was. Their only hope now is to spread happy memories about Randy and bring him the justice he deserves. He was more than just a nephew. He was like my own son because everywhere we moved to, he was always there. It kills me 
to hear them say that he was abusive to her when she made that statement. <clears throat> and it's making a mockery of women that have been abused. Mm. Actually have been abused. The people that do that though. They got no problem doing that. Abused. She never was. He wouldn't hurt her at all. And she tried and the crazy thing. Well, let's get through this. Let's get through this. Or they cut her off. No. I would love to hear the full interview of that. A lot of times the news, they'll chop it up and we don't hear the whole thing. According to the probable cause affidavit that I obtained, Tessalonica was charged with eight different counts today. The first count being the murder of her husband, Randy. The second and third being level five felonies contributing to the delinquency of a minor. The fourth, a level six felony, abuse of a corpse. The fifth count, also a level six felony, alteration of a death scene. The sixth, a class A demeanor, interfering with the reporting of a crime. And the seventh and final counts, both level six felonies of neglect of a dependent. Now, a GoFundMe has been set up for Andy by family members and has been posted. I'll go ahead and put a link up on our website at abc57.com. If you can, go ahead and give a helping hand. Live in South Bend, I'm Allison Zeihammer, ABC 57 News. Okay, so, uh, yeah, this is in Indiana. This took place. Now, uh, the court document, I got a video to play that I... Uh, pre-recorded three pages a little bit graphic but um and also i believe randy's brother spoke out on facebook he commented on something so i'm going to play the court document first and then we'll get into affidavit into the uh into the comment and again yeah if you guys wouldn't mind hitting like please we're not getting many likes it really helps out with the algorithm especially that i used up my notifications i think I'd appreciate that. All right. We'll do that and we can put you guys on the screen as well. Let's see if we do that. Uh, affidavit for probable cause. Now, this was filed 8 to 2021. This is the state of Indiana, County of LaPorte versus Thessalonica Allen and Victor Aguilar was sworn in under oath and based upon his investigation this affiant has probable cause to believe that the defendant committed the crime of and in support thereof states the following facts based upon his investigation to wit on 729 2021 hours I was briefed by Corporal Toth about a phone call that 911 had received from a subject by the name of Rory Walker, who resides in Benton Harbor, Michigan. Rory wanted to report a murder that happened in Laporte. Phone call with Rory. I contacted Rory over the phone and he informed me that he was at his ex's Thessalonica's house in Laporte on 728-2021 late in the evening. He stated he has a child in common with her. Rory said she asked him to come to Laporte because Thessalonica's current husband was beating on Rory's child. Rory said when he got to Laporte and inside Thessalonica's apartment, she showed him a body inside her closet, which she claimed it was her current husband, Randy Allen. Rory stated that she asked him for help by moving the body into the vehicle. He told her he didn't want anything to do with it and told her to take him back to Michigan. As they were driving back, she told Rory that she had to shoot Randy because he was beating on her and the kids. Rory said the other children also told him that they heard a loud bang inside the house while mommy and dad were arguing. When he was dropped off by Thessalonica, he stated she threw a gun out of the car and hit him in the lap. She drove off and he kept the gun. Rory said he was dropped off at 2 a.m. and didn't know what Thessalonica is going to do. Locating Thessalonica. After speaking with Rory on the phone, we searched Thessalonica's information and found that she resides at. We immediately had a detective sit outside the apartment to secure it until we could figure out what was going on. This is page two, and I'm not sure if this is one or two detectives. 
uh, they searched for Thessalonica at several places of employment, which that information was gathered by the apartment complex manager. While searching for her, they located her in the parking lot of Ace Hardware West, sitting inside a dark Chrysler Aspen. They approached Thessalonica as she had her driver's side door open and identified themselves as detectives with Laporte City Police. Thessalonica immediately began to cry and said, you guys don't understand. He beats me. I arrived moments later and we detained Thessalonica at the time and transported her to station. Interview with Thessalonica. After reading Thessalonica her advice of rights, which she signed and was willing to talk to officers without a lawyer present, we began to talk about what happened. Thessalonica confessed that she had shot her husband, Randy Allen, because of a physical altercation between each other. She stated they started arguing because when she got home, the kids told her that Randy had beaten them. She confronted him about it, which caused the verbal argument. During the argument, Randy grabbed her by the front of her neck area, causing her to not be able to breathe. Randy let her go and she thought he was walking away, but she saw him come at her again. At that point, she stated she decided to grab her gun, which she had on her person, and shot him once. Thessalonica stated that Randy is still in her apartment inside the closet in her daughter's room. So she's claiming that she's been abused. He's been beating her. But reserve your judgment because we're about to get in a second or in a minute to they interview the children too. And the children had a bit of a different uh, account of events about what happened. Search warrant of home. We obtained a search warrant for the apartment, which was executed during the search. Detectives located a deceased body that was dismembered inside a tote located inside the closet in one of the children's rooms. Second interview with Thessalonica. She then admitted that she had to cut Randy's legs off because she wasn't able to fit him inside the tote. She said that she panicked and didn't know what to do after she had shot him. She stated she used an axe to cut off his legs. Now, this, I believe, is an interview with the children, which the names are redacted. Both children were present during the altercation and after the fact. They stated the day in question, Randy was helping them with homework on the computer, and Randy saw a website that their mom had visited. When Thessalonica got home, Randy confronted her about it, so they began to argue. They took the argument into the bedroom where the kids both reported hearing a loud bang. They ran over to mom's room and saw Randy on the ground asking for help. Oh my God. And asking the kids to call 911. They stated that mom told them not to call 911 and go to their room. That night they were woken up by mom in the middle. That's pure ass evil. Evil. No remorse, no feelings, cold as shit. And so her story, she, he's beating on the kids and doing all this shit. And the kids, uh, that was helping us with homework. And, and I wonder what kind of website. And Randy saw a website that their mom had visited. And he confronted her. He began to argue. Flipped middle of the night asking them to help her drag Randy's body out of the room and try to load it in his vehicle. They made several attempts, but he was too heavy. They following day, they saw mom come home with cleaning supplies and an ax. They stated their mom then asked him to help her drag the body back into her bedroom. Later Wednesday night, they were again woken up to help mom put Randy's body into a tote. Blank stated that he saw Randy's legs were cut off at the point and saw his mother had put Randy's legs into a plastic bag. Thessalonica then pulled up her vehicle all the way up to the front door and asked the children to help her load the tote into the vehicle. The children stated they made several attempts to put the tote into a vehicle but he was still too heavy. The children stated that mom had plans to take the vehicle and body to South Bend and set it on fire. The children stated they didn't see any physical altercation that day, only verbal arguing. 
They mentioned that day during the argument, they heard Randy say he was getting his things and leaving, which is something that, you know, I've read somewhere that it's one of the most dangerous times when you're in that type of relationship, you know, abusive, when you're going to leave, when you're going to leave. And by the way, the audio was a little kind of muffled. Sorry about that. I had to put this on after I figured it out. I think it sounds better like this, but uh, this is what I came up with. But yeah, he was, apparently he was going to leave. They were arguing. Domestic issues. Uh, and it's not just only women. It happens to men, but men don't seem to talk about it as much. And men, they get laughed at. And it's never on the level of when it happens to a woman for a man. The kids were also asked if they saw mom and women in these situations too. <clears throat> Here's the thing with that. They know they can do all kinds of crazy shit and get away with it because of how society is. You got all these movements, you know, for the ladies, which, you know, I'm not saying it shouldn't be there, but when it comes to a guy, a lot of times things are changing because I've seen things going on now. The guys are getting rights in some cases, but they're kind of laughed at even cops. I remember one time, a long, long time ago, I don't want to sidetrack too much, but just to kind of add to what I'm talking about. Thank you, Evelyn. If you would like to go to the, ch if you'd like to support the channel, go to Facebook and send stars. Let's get this challenge completed. Thank you. There was one time I had an ex, crazy ex, <laughs> a couple of them, but uh, she slashed, all the tires to my car. All of them. All right. I called the cops. They came out. They looked at it. They had a little piece of paper and they just laughed. <laughs> you know, they just laughed. <clears throat> um, I've been in other situations too, but that's just to say, like, a lot of the times with, this, with guys, I mean, they just, they, even just society, other people, they don't take it serious. You know, so. Um, with a gun on her hip and these women too they know that they know how society see it and so they wall out and they know that you're not supposed to attack or hit or anything because god forbid you to even defend yourself forget about even attacking god forbid you even defend yourself you might get locked up but some of the things have changed some of the ties have changed so it's not like that for all the cases you know what i'm saying but there's people out there that know that they use that and manipulate it that day and they said they didn't see her with a gun. <clears throat> they were also asked if mom usually carries a gun on her person. They stated mom usually carries her gun in the car or in her purse. The children also stated that mom would wake them up to help clean up the blood. They stated mom had them boil water to use on the carpet in her room. Search warrant execution. During the search warrant, detectives located an axe and a knife inside Thessalonica's closet that had residues of red-like substance that appeared to be blood. The tote with the deceased body was located in the closet in the children's room. Bruh. Also in the children's room, the body, <laughs> you know, in the tote. I mean, how crazy is that? All right, kids. You know? No regard for this man or the kids. So several handwritten notes were located, which appeared to be a checklist with the following items. Number one, get drugs from friend. Number two, get Ziploc bags. Number three, when Randy is in the shower, get pawn tickets out of wallet. Number four, put gun slash drugs in car under seat while in car. Call Hearthside and tell them Randy had drugs and a gun in the car. She hated this guy. She hated this guy and looked like she wanted to set him up in any way that she could. Imagine that, bro. And maybe a lot of people are in that situation right now and don't even realize it. Maybe some of your friends, not like to this extreme. These people are next to you, living with you, talking with you every day and fucking plotting on your ass. Okay. Second note. Number one. Spray shit in face. Hit him in the right knee with a hammer. Number two, hit with hammer slash stab him. Number three, roll body up in sheets and plastic bags. Number four, pick up Jay. No phones. Jay follows me to LP. Put body in Lincoln with his boost phone. Leave Jay car here. Number five, 
take my keys and his car key off the ring. The above notes were found under the pillow in the daughter's room at the time of the search warrant execution. By the way, LP, I think, means um, the port. I think that's what she's referring to. Because they're from Indiana, the port. And SB, I believe, means South Bend. Because she was going to, the plan or the plot was to take him to South Bend in the car and light it on fire. I think that's what SB means and LP. Jay follows me to LP, Laporte. Drive to SB. Yeah. I think that's what the plan is. Third note. Go to SB. Jay follow me back to Laporte. Maybe two. Put Laporte body police. in Lincoln. Drive to SB. Leave body in car while running. Jay brings me back to, to LP. While doing this, be on comp doing ATI. Autopsy, 631-2021. Autopsy revealed that Randy Allen had a gunshot wound to the right arm, re-entering the right side of his chest slash abdomen. The round entered the spinal cord area, which a doctor concluded that it most likely prohibited the descendant from moving as he bled out. His body was found dismembered with both legs amputated and the left arm attempted to be amputated. So... The round entered the spinal cord area. So they're saying that they believe caused him not to be able to move from where he was at because of the spinal cord. And so he bled out there. And if you were listening to earlier, he was asking the kids while he was bleeding out to call 911, get help. And the mom saying, don't call 911, don't get help. They amputated or the mother amputated both legs and even attempted to cut off his arm. All right. That was the third and final page. So that that was the um, probable cause affidavit. I pre-recorded that last night just to kind of give myself a break today. Um, this is the GoFundMe. I'll put that in the link after. Let me get to the. Uh, there was a Daily Mail thing too which i thought was interesting but it has pretty much all the details oh let me show you some of the pictures too i think on facebook he said something like this is my wife or my lovely wife or something that's them together so i think it says certificate of marriage this is what the place the outside of the place looks like the murder took place inside the couple's apartment in laporte indiana Thessalonica said she stored Randy's body inside her daughter's closet. This is the family. Randy had five kids of his own, with the oldest starting a GoFundMe for the uh, burial, burial cause. Sorry. Randy pictured above was beloved by his family, who say the whole ordeal has been heartbreaking. There's some pictures there. So let me show you the uh, post too from the brother. So we can, I can, I don't know if he's posted after. I wanted to do a preliminary check again this morning, but I just didn't have time. So this is all from last night. I'll do a quick sweep before we get off. But um, so he says here, my brother loved his wife with his whole heart. He did not abuse her. In fact, it was the other way around. She isolated my brother from his family and his friends. She beat and attack my brother in front of my mother. Damn, she beat and attacked my brother in front of my mother and her children a couple months before this. And if everyone was if everyone would read this story with their minds eye wide open, you can see with those notes she wrote, she had planned this in several different ways. This woman is a textbook sociopath. And in what she, and what she did, it's in my soul to believe that she has done something like this before. My brother left several times and she stalked and begged him to come back. No abused woman would beg for her abuser to return to her. My brother only knew this woman for one month 
before he married her. Wow. I didn't even read this. I just took the screenshots. I didn't even get to read this last night. So my brother only knew this woman for one month before he married her, so he really didn't know her. He and I spoke on many occasions about how abusive she was towards him and her children. He was trying to give her and her children a good life. He asked my advice many times how to help her with her jealous and insecurity issues and controlling ways and told him to be honest and reassuring to her. That shit don't help though. With those people, that shit don't help. And he did just that by moving to, sorry. And he did just that by moving out South Bend away from all his family and friends. She wanted him all to herself. And he gave her that. And he loved her children like they were his on blood. And they loved him and called daddy. Wow. This woman killed my brother because he couldn't take any more of her craziness and wanted to leave and her in her thoughts. He couldn't. Sorry to leave. And in her thoughts, he couldn't have no one else going to have him. That's the facts for you who think this is a case of batter woman. There's another part to it. I'm sure those people are going to be jumping onto this too. And say, no, still no. You know what I'm saying? Like, just because it's the, the woman saying this and that. You got to take every story case by case. You got to absorb the details of each. You can't just apply everything from all the other cases to one blanket thing. You got to actually, you know, take it in. Um, somebody said here, I'm sorry, man, that's terrible. Did she have insurance by any chance on him? Lots of times these happen for financial reasons, too. But in all, she sounds like a nutcase. That's something we're looking into uh, by the folks out that believe that woman's story. Well, my sister talked to the prosecuting attorney and she has changed her story again and told that the brother was not abusing her. I uh, guess his a trophy proved that she shot him while he was bent over packing his bags. Wow. Wow, man. I mean, this is just, uh, it's really unfortunate, sad. And, you know, at 50 years old, man, to be dealing with that, bro, I hope to God. That's why, I mean, I talk all the time, single life and all that. That's why I say, man, take your time. I'm not putting any shame or blame on this guy at all. You know what I'm saying? But these people out here these days, man, they're crazy. They're crazy. And sure, maybe they're going to come up with some shit. Who knows? Maybe her attorney is, oh, she has this, she has that, she's depression, whatever. Yo, that's your shit, but you're not going to take everybody down with you either. You know what I'm saying? We can't let you, just because you have those issues, you can't go killing people and that you're going to get some sort of pass or whatever. That shit was planned. She knew damn well what she was doing. Damn well what she was doing. Crazy. So let me, um, I'm going to put this link in the description. Uh, they have a GoFundMe for his burial. If anything, you could just share the story. Uh, if you don't like me, just go type in the name on Google and you can share a link to the uh, random article, you know, just to get his name out. I'll put the link in the description. And, uh, Man, it's probably there's a lot of people out there probably going through some sort of something similar. And the thing is now, with all this stuff going on around the world, which we're not allowed to talk about, apparently, you know, we're, now we're banned from talking about this kind of stuff that's going around globally. But there's a, been a huge increase in domestic violence and substances and everything else. You know, I don't know that had anything to do with that, but people are just more on edge. I'm not saying that this drove her crazy. This chick was probably always crazy, but these people are now even more on edge. You know, but I think we'll we'll have to wait and see what comes out too. For me, this is a thing. <clears throat> uh even if it, I don't believe her story because of what the kids said. Um but even if it was that say somehow he hit her or something like that. This chick shot him. Let him bleed to, to death, right? Died out. He was asking for help. 
cut off his legs, had the kids try to help, involve the ex, uh, her ex boyfriend or the, the ex, the father to the kids or whatever there, the ex to come over, wanted to move the body, wanted to burn the body, wanted, had a list, a list of all the ways she could set this guy up. All right. I don't believe it with this chick. I don't believe her story. All right. I don't buy it. You have to come up with something else. And the kids are a witness. And, the, and so this is going to be a thing, too. I wonder, I don't know, if this is going to be like a trial that we see, like with um, Ronnie, as far as that kind of access. But the but more of that are the kids going to, um, you know, have to testify or take the stand. Uh, I mean, you got to be really cold and empty inside. You have no kind of soul. At that point, I would say you don't even have a soul. You have no kind of soul to do that and to do that to your kids and to kill this man. Empty carcass, bro. You're already dead. <laughs> that the only type of you must be dead inside. And just misery. I couldn't imagine what it would be like to be around that kind of person all day long. You know? So But anyway, man, I don't know. You guys comment some of your thoughts and then we'll, I guess we'll get out of here. I just wanted to do a brief story today. Got a couple things, a couple stories I want to put out. A lot of craziness going on around the world. Um, I hope she doesn't represent herself. Oh, Lord. <laughs> That's why her wig was crooked as fuck. That's so crazy, man. And I just imagine because it took them, it was five days. So now it makes sense why it was the, the gap of time that they learned about his death. They were trying to call him. He wasn't answering. This chick was over here trying to figure out what to do with the body you know Oof. gotta be some scary shit imagine being the kids to that mother and dealing with that hell every day that's gotta be hell every day <clears throat> and those kids ab absorb that and grow up with that and reflect that and now traumatized seeing what uh, the mother did and watching their father die. I don't know how old the kids were, but that's some evil ass shit, yo. It really is like the end of times. Like this is, we're just marching towards that direction. So, all right. So I guess we'll get out of here, man. I appreciate you guys coming through. Please hit the like button, subscribe, turn the bell notifications. Um, you know, cover stories like this once, once in a while. And I mean, I don't know, man, if you're about to leave some sort of crazy situation like this, I mean, I know for guys, it's kind of weird. Like they're probably thinking like, why would I go get help from somebody? But you might have to have some people there with you. Hindsight's always twenty twenty, and I'm not trying to say what he could have, should have done, but I'm just thinking of other people that are watching that are maybe going through the same thing. Maybe really plan out how you're going to leave. For, for some of these people, it really is, if I can't have you, nobody else can. You see how some of these people are online. What I realized with my online experience, man, as I've been doing this YouTube shit, YouTube thing, there's a lot of crazy people. I mean, I guess it's just the internet, but there's a lot. I've encountered these people. <laughs> More than I've wanted to. That's why I'm like, yo, I got to keep my distance. Maybe not give up my number as much. Because <laughs> I was like, there's a lot. I mean, a lot. And I'm not talking about, oh, crazy fun. Oh, ha, 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 whatever. Like, we're acting up. Or, yo, Mel, you're so crazy. No, I'm talking about nut. <laughs> Nutty crazy. Losing sleep over little things. A chat or a comment or something like that. Some of these people, their whole life is in this crap. You know, it's, it's crazy to me. And with that, with this guy's situation with Randy, I don't think it ever gets better. I don't think that it ever really improves unless the person maybe really goes get some therapy or something like that. Maybe, but you're going to do that on your own time because 
You know, it's not going to be with us. Bro, take your time, bro. Especially nowadays, take your time. Take your time. You know, stop be rushing. Stop being so desperate. A lot of people are desperate as hell. Stop being so desperate. I'm not talking about this guy. You know, I'm just saying people are just so quick to rush. I used to be like that too. I used to be like head first when I get into a relationship because like to me, it's like almost like a high when you're meeting somebody new and you're going out here and there and it's exciting and you tend to ignore the red flags. To me, it's like a high. I love that feeling, but that feeling can get you in trouble too. You know, that feeling sometimes, you know, it just makes you blind to certain things and certain things that you normally wouldn't be okay with. You just let slide. And that's something I've been trying to kind of learn, you know, your lines in the sand or your lines in the sand. Um, you shouldn't bend your lines because you really like somebody. If, if they don't like whatever it is that you're bringing or, or a certain trait about you, be upfront about it and you can move on. You know what I'm saying? You can move on, just like YouTube. You hate the concert, you're upset with me, move on. There's so many channels, a thousand, a hundred thousand channels. Go watch the other channel then. <laughs> you know, that, it's that simple. You know? So, and then especially if you have kids, man. Oh, Amanda, that's a good point, what Amanda said. She said, never announce your departure. Just leave. Go to the store, never come back. That's true. That is true. I think sometimes, too, in the emotion of things, and you just want to be like, I'm done. F it, I'm done. It's true. It really is better. There was a friend. She used to come on the channel, but she, she told me a story like that, that she had to, like, literally dirt, do it, I think, while the guy was at work or something like that. She packed all her stuff and, like, dip. You know, like, just. So by the time whoever it is got home, everything's gone. That's a good point, Amanda. If it's really bad like that, you really might have to consider something like that. And then especially if there's guns in the house, imagine being with a with a with somebody that's unhinged and then there's a gun in the house. I wouldn't be able to sleep. I would not be able to sleep. And if what's the brother saying true, they got married after one year. Well, not one year, one month. I think that's what he said. Let me look at it again. I think he said one month. That, that's fast. But that's what I'm saying. You can easily get carried away super fast. My brother only knew, knew this woman for one month before he married her. That's crazy. And I feel like those types of people look for those types of people. Maybe somebody vulnerable. Maybe somebody that's just kind of like, you know, going along with it. Somebody that's not going to resist too much. That's the other thing, too. You got to be able to say no. I used to be one of those yes people all the time. Uh, I, I think I still struggle with that sometimes. You got to be able to say no. You always want to please people. You be a people pleaser. Say no. I'm not doing it. Say no. Who cares who it pisses off? Say no, because you're not okay with it. But sometimes you're, so, you're thinking about everybody else's feelings you don't want to um, make people feel weird. I had people ask me some weirdo shit that you shouldn't be asking me. I had people, just for example, I'm not going to go into details, but people that I don't know like that, like, oh, yo, what's your address? <laughs> Why the fuck are you asking me that? <laughs> Why would I tell you? Or, or some other personal stuff. But in my head for a second, because this is somebody I used to talk with every now and then, I would think like, but if I say no, then what is this, per this person going to think? I don't trust them. Who cares? There's people out there like that. I don't know if they have no home training that they'll, you know, maybe they'll ask what, what school your kid goes to or some shit like that or what city are you in. There's some people that have no common sense, no DC, no training or that or that they know what they're doing and they feed off of people like that. that feel obligated to give certain types of information. You know, this chick is acting nuts, batshit crazy. You don't reward bad behavior. That's one of my, my things I learned too. You don't reward bad behavior. So reassuring her. Thank you, Annette, for the stars. Appreciate that. Thank you. Reassuring her and trying to please the devil, because that's what she is, the devil, the demon. Trying to please the demon, 
you give in, right? And you're moving in or whatever, and you're moving away from family and friends. These types of people, they're never pleased. They're never happy. They're always taking, leeching, sucking. They're life force suckers. They literally, you get around, if you ever met somebody like that, you've ever encountered somebody like that, maybe you had a friend like that, anytime you talk to these people, certain people, it's, a, it's draining. It's nothing ever positive. It's literally draining to talk or be around some of these people. They suck the life out of you. But I couldn't imagine what it was like for this guy or those kids. You know? I mean. Bro, I try to stay away from those people all I can. Let them drain each other. <laughs> if we ain't building, we ain't trying to. I'm not saying people can't go through things, but if somebody always sucking the life out of you, yo, you got to go. Too old for that shit. These kind of relationships, too. I'm poof, done with that. Too old for that. In my 30s, I'm too old for that shit. <sighs> um, there was something else I thought about, but. I don't know. But yeah, there's people out there, man. Don't be too nice. That's the other thing, too. Being overly nice. People will walk all over you. They'll take your ass for a ride. All over you. If you're somebody. Now, I'm saying that you can't be nice. But if you're one of those overly nice people, like I said, people please your people. There's people out there that seek that out. And they'll take you for a ride if you let them. You know? So, but what was that? Again, it's back. But uh, but yeah, man. Okay, now I'm out because <laughs> I could talk forever. I just feel I feel I feel bad for the guy and the family, um, and the kids. Really, the kids is just gonna be you know now they they don't have either parent. I mean, not that they're losing anything from losing out on the mother, but now the dad's not there. Hopefully, I don't know what's gonna. I have no idea what the thing is. Oh, <laughs> hopefully the kids. I don't know if they're gonna be put with the extended family or if they're going to be depending on the age uh taken into some sort of i don't know oh burr <laughs> yeah it's crazy man because you just want to protect these kids i'm like that too uh, with my daughter, I just want to protect her and protect her, but I just kind of realized that, you know, you can't. Eventually, they're gonna have to, you know. I mean, my daughter's super young still, but I saw some dads talking about that once about being overprotective, but like some of the negative effects. I mean, I'm always gonna be a paranoid dad, but you can't like just keep him in some sort of box, you know, like just from the realities of society. Uh, Amanda, I don't remember the name. You might have to just look on my channel and type it. I think if you go to my channel and just type Wanda West, I think you can find it. I haven't watched it in a long time, but but again, if you guys wouldn't mind hitting like, please. Got 142 people and 77 likes. Don't forget the algorithm out. It's free. It's just a click. 144. Let me see. But uh, yeah, so you guys have a good day. Good afternoon, man. Take care. Uh, be safe. Wash your hands. You know what I'm saying? Oh, next Friday, I'm going to get the antibody test. So I might make a little vlog out of that. I don't know if they're going to let me record. And then I'm going to wait for the results before I post the video because I think the results take, takes like a day or two or three. I, pro I think I might have the antibodies, bro. So it's been two years now. BL said if you look up Alex Skeel case, you will see how real domestic abuse towards men are. Oh, Lord. I'm afraid to look. <laughs> we should cover some of the guy sides, too, though, you know? Just like with the... I mean, somebody told me that, too, I'll go missing some of the missing men. There's a lot of men going missing. And that's why I brought up that whole story. I've mentioned it several times where uh, the men are now being drugged. If you haven't seen that live stream, you need to go check it out. There's multiple stories. The men are being drugged. And taking advantage of and all, and, and the news article said there's a lot more stories than that. That's fine. 
I was fine with the antibodies. That's fine. <laughs> That's good. That's good enough for me. If I have the that stuff, I'm not going to go do the other stuff, if you know what I mean. It, to me, I've always been on the fence, but if I if I have that, it's a hell no for me. I'll leave it to my body then. I'll take my chances. You know? That's fine. <laughs> uh, isn't the antibody test only for three months prior to today? Uh, I have no idea. I, I actually heard it's more than 90 days, but I don't want to speak on something I'm not too sure about, like how, how long the antibodies are. But if I personally, if I have the antibodies, then I'm not going to go stick myself with some other shit. My body's already fought it and I'm, I've been fine <laughs> all this time. So why would I go? I per, that's just my personal belief. If I have the antibodies, that's it for me. I'm done. I'm just going to try to lose weight. I need to lose weight, a lot of weight. Go jogging every day now, again, like I used to. I brought a kettlebell. I got my vitamins. I gained like an immense amount of weight, I guess, because I'm, I'm home now all the time. Gotta get more active. I think it's actually more than 90, and I think you guys should look it up for yourself. Um, bum, 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 bum. Here's what I can read from healthline.com. For those who recover, immunity can last up to eight months, maybe longer. I've heard six months, 90 days, three months. That's the first I heard of that. But whatever it is, go do your own research and, and find, look for yourself. Because I can probably bet you that whatever article you go to might tell you something differently. But I've, always, I've heard at least several months. That's what I've heard, several months. So for some people, you know, that might not be good enough for them and they might want to go get whatever they need to get. And that's your choice. I believe, I really do believe in choice. And it's funny to me too that the people that are always, oh, my body, my choice. Now it's not my body, my choice. <laughs> it's your body, my choice. I don't know. But I think it's, it should be up to people's choice and decision. Uh, but there's plenty of different articles. One here from Forbes says it can last up to nine months. Um, I mean, and I'm sure it's probably different for everybody. And I think that as the longer the time passes, the shorter, like the, the less effective your antibody, it probably drops off. You know, I don't know. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, yeah. If I have that, bro, the anti stuff, you can't convince me. I'm sorry. I don't care who you are. <laughs> you cannot convince me oh lord bernice another five-year-old oh my god what is it we're, we're we're running in fives is that a story we haven't heard about oh jesus no no oh there's a lot of different five-year-old stories which is kind of weird i'm not sure what's with the fives maybe the people that are into numbers can say something about that <laughs> right joe that shit is so ridiculous people are some of the most hip hypocritical people ever yo i'm done with that yo <laughs> <laughs> done done with these people logan mewangi let me see is that the one i'm looking at yeah, that's the one I'm looking at, Logan Mwangi. Okay, so on a separate video, because I don't want to extend this too long, but on a separate video, maybe I'll, I'll cover this today. Okay, this is what um, Bernice is talking about. And it's so weird that all these kids, it's like the fives, I don't know what is up with that. Found safe. I don't know. All right, but now I'm out. I'm out. Thank you, guys. I love you. Thank you so much for coming through. I appreciate your time hanging out with me. Uh, condolences to the family, man. And I hope that they get some justice and these people don't try to you know, swiggle or, or, I don't know, snake their way out of justice with this woman. So um, you guys take care. Hit like, peace, all that good stuff.